Hello there, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you what's in the bag. Now for those of you not familiar with modern air rifles, this is probably going to look like something off a oh, science fiction film. You expect laser bolts to be coming out the end. But um, this is actually a pre-charged air rifle with the ability to top up the air tank in the field without dragging big air bottles around or a stirrup pump. Now before I get into the actual features and workings of this particular rifle, I'll just explain what I've got on it in the way of the scope and the bipod and also explain my reasons for picking these particular ones. So first of all we've got the scope. It's a Hawk Air Max 30 and it looks extremely long because it's got a sunshade on here. It would normally end here. And it's got flip up caps to protect it from the dust. Now the magnification on this is 4 to 16 by 50 which is far more than I'll ever need for a pellet gun but I like to zoom way in when I'm lining the sights up when I'm setting the sights and then I draw it back and I find that increases the accuracy and it also reduces the shake as well it, it really does make a difference if you set the sights on the highest magnification then pull it back I mean at the moment I've got it on 8 so it's really only magnifying half as much as it can but that's enough for me it's got an illuminated reticle so you turn that on and turn on that clockwise. Now what that does, it gradually increases in intensity. Um, so if you're shooting in low light conditions, you can whack it right up and you've got really, really bright crosshairs to draw your attention to the center of the scope. On your mid to high range scopes, you would generally have a parallax adjustment here and that would basically focus the scope at range. On this particular one, it's on the side, so you don't need to twist the end of the scope. It's actually on the left hand side of it and on the top and on the right hand side you've got your adjustments for moving the reticle up and down left and right. And what I like about this particular scope is, and this is one of the reasons why I chose it, is that you don't have removable caps for here. You've literally just got another wheel on the top which you slacken off that allows you to click this left and right or up and down and then you simply just tighten it up again. Now this bipod is a reasonably lightweight one and it's a Vanguard Equalizer Pro. That would normally be tucked up like that. So all you do if you want to take a shot and you want to lie down for maximum stability, you flip these legs out and you'll notice they'll rotate. I'll cover why they do that in a second. And then you can increase the length of the legs simply by drawing them out. And they are spring loaded so they pop back up. So imagine if you're on a hill, you've got one leg out and the other leg in. Your bipod actually has a spring on the top end of it which allows you to tilt the gun. So you don't have to have the bipod perfectly level and that to me is an absolutely essential thing to have on a bipod. I'll show you that there. So even if you've only got one leg out, you can tilt your rifle to be perfectly straight up and down and that's going to maximise the accuracy of your shot. But the beauty of this one is that with the feet planted, you can actually swivel left and right as well. So you can actually track your target without resetting your bipod. And obviously with the spring, goes up and down, side to side, so you've got maximum flexibility in your bipod whilst at the same time having maximum stability as well and that is ultra important. That just fits onto the rail under here and folds away when it's not in use. So onto the rifle itself, well this is a Swedish made FX Indy. I'll put all the details to it in the video description 
but it's basically a bullpup design pre-charged air rifle that also has the ability to recharge in the field and that is a big thing for me I don't want to be carrying air bottles around I don't much fancy the brake barrel spring guns because they're not as, as regulated as the pre-charged ones so this marries it pretty much marries the two you've got a lovely short rifle with very very consistent power but you can top that power up without dragging air bottles or a big pump around with you on this side here you've got your pressure gauge at the minute it's up to the max or just beyond the max and when it runs low all you do is top it back up with this really easy to use pump now I just want to mention that this one is actually on my firearm certificate it isn't a 12 feet pounds air rifle this is actually 30 feet pounds and out of the tiny little tank that you have in here you can allegedly get six full power shots before you need to start pumping it again I've actually found that it'll go through a whole mag which is 12 shots and I haven't really noticed a drop off in power so I don't know whether that's an improvement from when the first came out or what but um, I can get a full mag at pretty much full power without noticing a drop in accuracy and talking of the mag the 2.2 version which this is comes with one 12 shot magazine and that just slots in the top here There you go so now you're ready to fire just like a bolt action rifle except it's a pre-charged air rifle just fire this one off So even at 30 feet pounds, it's really, really quiet. There is the option of putting a silencer on, which I didn't go for, but I might put one on in the future. I don't know. I was kind of running out of finances by the time I got all this stuff put together, so the silencer may have to wait if it's necessary. The hole in the stock allows you to fit two magazines in. Got one, two, and they are not going to fall out of there so really, in essence, you could have two fully loaded mags here, one in here whilst you're shooting, and that'll give you 36 shots before you needed to reload your magazines. Like many of the modern guns now, it's got a synthetic stock. Uh, and believe it or not, this is actually the first gun that I've owned with a synthetic stock. I've always gone for wood, mostly walnut thumbhole stocks. But I, I do like this. It's going to be really, really easy to clean. And it's a nice muted colour as well, it's not going to stand out. It's just a very well put together gun. It's got the adjustable butt plate and an adjustable cheek plate as well. Now I haven't altered either the cheek plate or the butt plate, but for me they're in the perfect position. Basically just pick it up. My eye drops right in the middle of the scope. So for me that's perfect. If it was for somebody else, say with bigger cheeks or smaller cheeks, you might need to move this backwards or forwards. You might need to move that up and down. It's flexible. As you can see, the stock's got a pistol grip. I would have preferred a th like a thumb hole version of this, but um, I, I quite like the look of this. It makes it very tall, though, very difficult to fit inside the gun cabinet. Practically take up the whole cabinet just with this one rifle, which isn't ideal. But it's very comfortable to hold, and although it's heavy, it's very steady, it's very well balanced. The trigger is a two-stage match trigger, and that is absolutely excellent. Now what I mean by two stages, when you pull it, you go until you feel resistance, and that resistance, that's your let-off point. So you're about to take your shot, you draw it back till you feel the resistance 
and then just a slight twitch and your shot goes. It does have adjustable draw as well, but I haven't adjusted it. It's set up bang on, absolutely bang on. The people from FX obviously know what they're doing because this is a really, really, really nice rifle. Very innovative, which is what attracted me to it, but also performs extremely well as well. Now with regard to the power, these do all come with three variable power settings. And that little wheel there has either three dots, two dots, or one dot. And you can move it backwards and forwards to set the power. So for this FAC rated version at 30 feet pounds, setting number three is 30 feet pounds, setting number two is 18 feet pounds, and setting number one is 12 feet pounds. And at the 30 feet pound setting, it should be firing a pellet out at over 900 feet per second. That's in the 2.2 calibre. So I've quickly shown you the cocking mechanism. I'll just go through it again. Basically just a little lever, which cocks the pin back. And when you push it forward, the pin pushes the pellet into the chamber and sets it. You've got a safety here, which moves backwards and forwards. Back is safe, forward is fire. Very, very simple, and that is the obvious way to do it. Although, when you have it back in the safe position, it actually says F, but it's got an arrow pointing to S, which is safe, which is actually where you fire. So initially that could be confusing, but back safe, forward fire. It's common sense when you think about it. Now if you didn't want to fire it, you'd basically just hold your cock and lever back, pull the trigger, and allow that to go forward. Now there's no gas expelled, so it's totally safe. Right, that's our target over there. And we're going to be shooting it from here, which is 25 yards away. I'm not going to pump it up between shots. I'm just going to let it go and try and get the full mag at full power out of the charge. That's the 12 shots. From what I can see, it doesn't look too bad. And hopefully, as you can see, that was in real time. So it's not as if I was taking a long time. I was basically just rattling through those shots. So let's see how accurate it was. Well, my first one was horrendously low. And that's barely sticking into this fiber board. I think there was a problem with the power there. For whatever reason, it didn't throw it out at full power, and that was the first shot. The rest of them aren't too bad. There's probably about an inch spread apart from this fella. Most of them did go through the middle, and that was just rattling them off. Here we go. Second round of 12. Pumped it back up, back up to full power. See how I do this time.
Somebody else hide that one. That's it, it looked like there was a couple of high ones, but the grouping was definitely better. Yeah, that grouping was a lot better, but they are kind of clustered up here whilst I was aiming for there. So by the looks of it, I just need to drag the sight in a little bit and drop it. I'll do that next time. Hopefully we'll get them all blob on right in the middle of there next time. I know I was still going a little bit fast. I don't like to hang on to my shots though. Because when you're hunting, you, you can't really hang on to your shots, you've got to take them fast, generally. So I like to practice as if I'm going to be actually hunting. Um, it does cost accuracy a little bit, but the more you practice with a particular rifle, the better you'll get. I'm reasonably pleased with that, and the power has dropped to about 175 bar. There you go. And I didn't notice a difference in power throughout those 12 shots. You know, if the, if the power was dropping off, you'd see the pellets starting to slide further and further down the target. I'm sure if I stuck another mag in here now and went for another 12 shots on the remaining charge, I would see them slide down and down. But 12 shots at that power is awesome. That's just hellish. Now in all my excitement, I actually forgot to tell you about a lampant kit that I've got as well, which is going to be fitted to this gun. But unfortunately it's starting to rain, that's going to have to be kept for another video. But basically we've got a super powered flashlight, which is going to fit onto here in one of two interesting ways. This little thing comes with a lot of good attachments quite an interesting one so as I say it's raining I don't want this fella to get soaking wet so we're gonna keep that for another video I'll run through that in another video and I'll run through the mag because that's a very very innovative de design I want to go into more detail about that we'll probably talk more about the actual workings and the accuracy of the gun once I've used it more as well and I am intending to do a video on nighttime shooting so I'm going to show you my various setups for nighttime shooting on the different rifles and air pistols that I've got. So look out for that. Now although I've basically just touched on this fella, I'll put the details of it in the video description and as I say, I'll do a proper video on it when it isn't raining. Now I bought this particular rifle from a company called Bradford Stalker. And they're reasonably local to me, probably 20, 25 minutes away. And I just wanna give a special thanks to a guy called Scott who basically helped me through every stage of acquiring this particular rifle and he also helped me to set it up recommended the, the various things that are on it it all goes together very very well as a package and as a package deal it, the price was okay but the service was excellent really price is a secondary issue for me service is the main thing and that was excellent so big thank you to Scott check out Bradford Stalker in the video description so far, absolutely love it. Look out for future videos featuring this fella, and I shall see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.